Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching. Fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. Uh, um. <laughs> I get to talk to an old friend and a new one today in John Livesay and Sam Hain in their new creative book. Oh, man. Slow City Blues coming out this June. Guys, fill me in. It's with uh, Zoop Publications. I haven't I haven't even ran into the Zoop guys yet. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, they're brand brand new. <laughs> brand spanking new. Yeah. How the they, how this come about? Because I remember John a while ago was telling me he was kind of working on a project but couldn't tell me about it. And now here it is, boom, you know, we're coming all out done. this June. What's that? It's all done. All done, you know, what, all Kickstarter, done. I assume? Through, through Zoop. Through Zoop. All, all, yeah, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do the spiel. I'll do all the right. Zoop spiel. Uh, so by the time, you know, because 2020 was 2020, as, as you know, uh, we then finished it, finished the book, all five issues complete. We then wanted to, you know, the, the world started to turn around uh, and we wanted to take this 2021 do-it-yourself energy uh, and we wanted to put the book out because we just, we couldn't agree upon, you know, we couldn't find a, a publisher or it was like, well, we know what we have and we want it to be as big as we possibly can. And we were thinking like, okay, do, do we take it here and lose money? Do we take it here and not have a, a good enough chance? And serendipitously enough, Zoop came along looking for places uh, or looking for projects. And Zoop, 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 Zoop. There, I did the prerequisite name drop. Uh, they are a like a, a curated turnkey soup to nuts concierge service for comic creators, and they handle everything from the 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 marketing, the 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 campaign. They help you with the campaign. They help you with the fulfillment, the distribution, the, you know, they, the long tail sales, which is nice. So there's no, there's no like post campaign backer kit if you want to do add-ons and so forth, really for both customer and consumer. And I feel like an Avon saleswoman right now, but it's just like, it's that great where it's like for customer and consumer, it's like they, they handle for us, they handle all the heavy lifting. So pros can focus on the work they want to, you know, I, I always say, Zoop takes the owl out of crowdfunding, but honestly, for the consumer, it feels like. Uh, and they showed us the the like the landing page. It it's as easy as Amazon Prime. It's literally like you just need the one credit card, and you can get whatever you want, whatever whatever tiers you want, whatever like what physical product, whatever add ons you want. It's it literally is click beep and like had John, because what John had said is we're all done. It's going to get to you. It's that easy. It, you click it and it's almost like Amazon Prime where our turnaround time is going to be so fast and we're so excited and so happy with Zoop. And now I've got, said all I had to say about that. <laughs> well, the one, one good thing, as Sam had mentioned, for like pros, like longtime comic pros like myself, going with Zoop, and I'm sure, Rob, you know, you've seen other campaigns where like, they get funded and they still have to finish the book or they still have to keep going. And then they have to worry about, you know, doing the printing and talking to the printer and the shipping, all that stuff. So Zoop takes care of all that other stuff where if you need to finish the pages, you can focus on the drawing or to finish to get the coloring all done, you know, really get, get it ready to get out there. You know, like the fans, if they're excited enough to buy it, we want to make sure we're excited enough to get it to them as quickly as possible. So there's Fair no list. waiting with us. It's great. And, you know, the headaches of, I, I've only heard from my friends doing crowdfunding stuff. It's so much work doing all of the other stuff. Yeah. So it's- or the headaches of using four separate credit cards to get the variant covers you want or get, you know, or get yeah. different products. You don't need that with them. It's literally it's one stop easy. shopping. It's very easy. You know, because Webtoons has kind of taken over the com the comics market yeah. as of late. You know, um, yeah. you know, a lot of comic companies have gone, and I hate the phrase "woke," but you know, yeah. one ex you know to one extreme versus the other, and then like there's not the level of creativity that you're allowed to have or express yourself. You know, it's always focused one agenda or or the other, and this way, you know, like Steve Niles was was the king of. Um, of self-publishing and create, creator-owned stuff. 
How does this work in that model? Because you are working with Zoop. Do they try to hinder your creativity or put you in a box? No. Nope. Like, here you go. Have at it. No, nope. that was it. Here you go. I was going to say, you, yep. you, read, you read the book, right? <laughs> I feel like they definitely, they read and they're like, yeah, we don't, we love it. Do it. Do your thing. We're here for you. So well, I can't was, give uh, any spoilers, you know, we, we want people we to get into light. We, yeah, I was going to say, we can do light stuff, right? right? You know, well, let's see, it's five <laughs> issues. We can go maybe up to paid. Let's do the traditional up to page <laughs> six of yeah, the first right. issue that we can <laughs> talk about. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Fair. I, I feel like you can probably, we could talk up to 20, 30, 34, right? You can get up to 34 issue one. <laughs> Well, I know I know you guys are doing the individual issues, but is there going to be at some point selling it all as a graphic novel because there yeah, are people that all what love we're doing, that as well? Yeah, what we're what Zoop the with our initial launch, it will be you can get there's five the five floppies issue one and two are basically double sized, and then we'll have one very nice collected hardcover. So if you, I kind of came up with all the tiers and the items since I'm a long time collector and I you know kind of seem to see what people dig and what they don't so I like floppies I always have but I know people like to have the collected stuff and they like to have stuff to put on their shelves so we're gonna have you know all the floppies with all the ridiculously amazing covers we have and a nice hardcover so everything will be there and, and those floppies will be in a uh, case. nice slip cover case where you're getting another bit of exclusive art for that for the cover of that so Basically, we're doing like a season one drop. So you're going to be able to, you're not going to have to wait to get, you know, it's not a campaign for issue one and then two. This one, it's all five ready to go. Get the whole first storyline. Yeah. And um, yeah, they, they, they look really nice. So it's definitely going to be really cool looking. And are you going to keep the Sea Monkey ads? This is how, how far back we're going into the graphic right. novel or is it going to just be in the loo loose issues? It, actually, we went with uh, X-ray specs in the back of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I miss those ads in the comics, man. Those are those are like the fun, goofy ridiculous. Ad. Yep. Yeah. They're, those are the ads that belonged in comic books. <laughs> and so I'm assuming back then that people must have ordered that all the time, or else they never would have keep putting that in the in the books. I mean, it was, how did you see boobs back years. then? That was it. That's the only way to see boobs is with X-ray specs. They were. I don't know. It was very weird. <laughs> You know, and then they eventually came out with like the bodybuilding machines that you could order on there and whatever yep. else. And I was like, all yeah. right, you know, what is the, the, this thing, <laughs> right? This one, <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the, uh, the little metal chain one that ripped out all your chest hair if you ever used oh, one yeah. of those old 70s oh. ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I never understood that. I had one of those like but no chest hair 20. <laughs> I had one of those like 20, 25 years ago. I never understood. I mean, I guess back in the, you know, forever ago, you just, use what you had and that's what they, that was what was there in the store so. right yeah no <laughs> we're making fun of the old comics but you know it's, it's because of those that that we now get to zoop and your guys's yes. book yes and how did the how did slow city blues come about because i i know sean you know you you were trying to work with a uh, with a video game company and you're like you didn't get the writing position so you're like all right i'm out and and went your own way and yeah. John, you've been, you know, a journeyman inker for as long as Ever. I've known you and even before, you know, like how does all yep. this come about and then like decide on the story itself and like the, the, the working relationship that you guys created? I, I mean, at least for the latter part, the, the, the working relationship and having that, that is due in large part to John. And then before that, my, cause I have a background in film and TV. And so that was my producing partner introduced me to John. And John, uh, John, like this wouldn't be here if it wasn't for John, because he was the we call we call him the uh, the coordinator, because it's not just talent. He like the pu he's like the puppet master, but he's the one that put everything together. I'll let him say his thing. <laughs> Go ahead, tell the yes. story. So, Spin the um, wheel, baby. Uh, yeah, our mutual friend uh, Mike, our one of our other partners, he got me in touch with Sam and said, "Hey, you know, he's got this comic. He doesn't know really." he doesn't know how to do anything with it so we we got our first phone call we were talking for a while he sent me over the script um you know i checked it out it looked good so i you know i 
figured I was give it a go. You know, I had been asked many, many, many times when I was going to do a creator own book or this or that. So I figured, you know what, this was crazy how it just kind of showed up, fell in my lap. So I was like, let's, let's give it a go. And it just took a while to iron out stuff and find a penciler. You know, originally I was not going to do any of the art. I was just going to run everything and then get gigs with that I was already doing for Marvel and DC, do those as well. But it was taking a long, long, long time to land a penciler. And it was taking so long, I didn't know what the time frame we would have. And also, if somebody else was going to ink it, I was going to be too very particular about everything. And I didn't want to waste time with back and forth and fixes and this and this and this and this. So I was like, you know what, I'll just do it. It's just, that's how I ended up, which I went from doing none of it to doing all of it. And I, I, out of all the covers we did, I think I inked five, but I did all the pages. And then, you know, like you said, just handling everything, you know, I brought in all the talent, like we brought, we brought in the colorist and I got a recommendation from a friend of mine about the letter and production. He's been great, Thomas. And um, just reached, since I know everybody, I reached out for the covers. And I wanted to make sure if you're, plunking down your hard-earned money for these books I want to make sure you're getting some great interiors and the covers are the best of the best you know I made sure to spare no thought and all the effort I put into really researching who who was very desirable who shops are ordering and reordering all the time and whose covers were possibly going up in value because again I'm a collector and I love that stuff and I know there's countless other people do too so I cold emailed a lot of people for the covers and shockingly most of them said yes when you tell them there is a almost seven foot skunk involved and uh i thought yeah. there'd be a different response but yeah and then i luckily was able to reach out to other very good friends of mine and they got they penciled up the covers i inked a bunch of them and you know it, it's nice to be able to have your good friends be involved with the project and really let them shine which it, with the material we have Again, with this with this very cool looking skunk, getting some of the covers we got from some of these artists, they might be some of the best ones they've done. And I'm not just saying that because this is my book and I think everything's the best. It was just, I was blown away. We get some, I was like, man, it's so good. And like a few that we got, it might be some of the best pieces they've done. You have the list, right? Yeah. Uh, here's the list uh, of some of the okay. artists, like cover artists. David yeah. Finch, Paul Pope, uh, Derek Chu. He's going to be on the seventh. He's, he's good. Go ahead. Brett Here's Booth. Uh, what's it called? Francesco Mattina, Yasmin uh, Putrin, Howard Porter, Philip Tan, Carrie Nord, uh, Pat Olifi, Ryan Green, uh, Randy Green, Doug uh, Monkey. 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 Thank you. You know, you got that. And then on top of that, you got Sean Mull, who's your penciler now that's done, you know, some really crappy books like Ve What If Venom, Deadpool, She-Hulk, <laughs> Wildcats, Friday the 13th, Outsiders, 52, whatever else. You know, books nobody knows about. And then you got Dave Barron, uh, who's your colorist. Uh, Thomas Moore, who, who's your letterer. I mean, you guys got you guys got half of the DC, Marvel, and, uh, and Image crews all in here. You know, one third of each. And we have on that cover list, we also have Juan Tedesco, who might be... I think maybe one of the best cover painters right now in comics. And to be fair, for people who don't know John, if John actually praises something, it's actually really good. I mean, I'm actually, very it's particular. Not, <laughs> actually, it's not really good. It's absolutely fantastic. I, I'm if, if very, goes, very, very, very. Eh, it's not bad. It's really good. You know, and if he doesn't like it, it's average. We so, had. Yeah. I, I had one of the guys. <laughs> I'm not going to say who it was. One of the guys that did a cover. He had turned in his layout. And it was fine. And I was like, well, I guess it's okay. And again, I was more than grateful that he even said yes. Because again, I the guys I just didn't know that I cold emailed, I was expecting an instant no. And I was like, hey, can we maybe do something a little more story-centered for this issue? He's like, I don't know if I got time. I don't know if I can do this. I was like, all right, hey, let's put a pin in this for two months. I will get back to you. <clears throat> and so we did that. And I got back to him. Then he turned in this new one, which was like a hundred times better. And it, it was just amazing. The colors he used on it, the oranges, it was just beyond awesome. I was like, 
Yes. So sometimes the you massage a little bit and just what came back was just outstanding. Yeah. Well, the this whole project seems like you guys have been reinvigorated in comics because comics have kind of taken a dip, you know, whether it's political correctness or whether it's conservative comics that, that people are arguing about or whether it's creators arguing with each other on Twitter for, for no reason, yeah. which I don't understand. Um, you know, I think Twitter is just the place to go vent in 240 characters and then send links about whatever pushes your agenda. Um, you yeah. Know, when, when you have this level of freedom that you guys have, and then all of a sudden are creating it yourself. You don't have this like three week deadline to turn it around and go, this is boom, 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 boom. This is when we need it. And if not, we're going to get somebody to do the last six pages. It looks nothing like your work and they're not going to get credit for it. And it's all this weird stuff. You know, yeah. when you put your heart and soul into it and it's your own baby on top of it. How much more rewarding is it for you than like, wow, I just created a new Spider-Man villain and I get none of like the, the, uh, you know, the payoff for it. It's, I mean, it's, it, it, it's like a feeling I can't describe. And I, I think it's because we, it's almost been, you know, it, I think it's because it's almost been a decade and to actually have this come to fruition, you know, this is a, this is an idea that came, this is an idea that came out of spite of being, you know, not getting the job and being told no, you know, and, and having to like go through a lot of, a lot of hardships and a lot of trials and tribulations, you know, uh, not to get too, too much into that, but it, it's, it's like to be able to see something that you imagined in your head, actually being able to go out into the public and have, you know, and have the ability to have it be, you know, uh, liked or loved or, you know, read at least, you know, and to have it look like it does because of Sean and John and Dave and Thomas, you know, and the fantastic cover lineup that kind of like, pre primes everybody for the book is, is, is like, I'm, I'm beside myself. And so, you know, it, it's, it's a feeling that I, 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 maybe it's like akin to giving birth, but I don't know. I don't got a kid. That's definitely, that's definitely a you guys kind of thing. Cause I know you guys got the kids. I, I don't have any kids. I don't have a wife. Oh, you don't? Nope. I was engaged well, once and then Jesus reminded me why he loved me. And so that ended and uh, you know, couldn't have been happier uh, more than a decade ago with that. <laughs> But there it is, you know, and of course, you know, I just assume the six foot skunk is a representation of the previous company that didn't give you the writing gig. <laughs> it actually uh, it's that's the better story. I feel like that's the better take on it. But it actually it's the skunk is John's fault. And it's because he originally was a raccoon. And I was like, oh, I'm going to call him rack. It'll be funny. And John calls me, he goes, you can't do that, dummy. And I went, why? And he goes, why do you think you came up with a raccoon? I was like, because it's funny and he eats trash. And he's like, why though? And I went, uh, and he goes, could it be Rocket Raccoon? I went, oh, yeah, damn it. Uh, I'll call you back. Let me think of another one. Okay, bye. You know, so I blame John for the skunk. <laughs> and, and John calling you up and calling you dummy and not putting it in oh, text, yeah. but in voicemail. You know, at the very least, is oh, yeah. about accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I talked to him. <laughs> we talked to each other so much. I think his wife calls me his second wife. And my fiance goes, did you talk to your husband today? Like, yeah. No. <laughs> yes. So. So the wives <laughs> have a weird jealousy uh, of each other at this point and your guys' relationship. Uh, yeah, maybe. But every time the phone rings, uh, she basically uh, says that. It's Sam. Yeah. And yeah. then, lo and behold. <laughs> well, well, the best story John ever told me about his wife, I think you guys were engaged at the time. I was like, why don't you bring her with you to the cons? You're like, she doesn't want to come to these things. They're like, oh, she would, she's see? been to a few. Right. She, but like had... someone asked her about a Spider-Man page and she was like, which one's yeah. Spider-Man? Yeah. So yeah, that was at WonderCon a, a, a while ago, and it was one of the few she I don't know she just felt like coming. So I had an artist alley table, and she she wanted some coffee, so she didn't want to go. She wanted me to go. I was like, fine, I'll go get it. So and you know the lines in the concession stands are a little long, so I was gone for maybe twelve minutes or ten minutes or something, and I come back with it, and she's like, oh, all these people they came up and they're asking me stuff I don't know what to talk about, and on my table I had a, a little stand. Uh, 
stand up with uh, an Iron Fist piece I did with Pat Olaf. And, it, you know, it's really cool. looking. so I always put it up and she's like, and everyone's asking me, like, there's some sort of Iron Fist guy. I don't know what that is. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's, it's that guy in the yellow booties. And he's like, oh, well, and then, you know, she, they just kept asking. She's like, I don't know. Then, like, they're asking her if she drew this stuff. She's like, I don't know what this is. Or I'll there was one other little funny thing. She came to the New York comic house with me years and years and years ago. And she hadn't really seen, you know, she wasn't like, oh, well, people buy originals. And sometimes they pay a little bit and sometimes they pay a crazy amount for these. So I had this really awesome, I did the New Avengers 25 issue with Jimmy Chung. It was that all Iron Man issue. And I ended up getting back one of the two really good splash pages. I had it there. And we're sitting there, the guy's thumbing through my pages, and, um, you know, he's like, oh, how much is this one? I go, it's a G. And my wife isn't, like, paying attention. He's like, hmm, okay, that's cool. And I was like, right. And he just gives me, you know, a grand. And my wife is freaking out because she didn't understand that somebody's going to pay that much money for a piece of paper. <laughs> that first time when you went to go get coffee, though, that would have been the best time to just, like, fire sale that book. Like, he's gone. Get all the pages. Talk to his wife. No. Ten bucks? Ten bucks is fine. Usually that's how it is. I mean, it's a piece of paper with some ink on it. What are you like? <laughs> And then, to make it even worse, after the guy bought that page, I got up, went and bought a piece of original artwork with that money, and she oh flipped out even more. She's like, I can't believe you to spend I was like, I go, just wait. Just wait. And that was probably... I think that was like 12 years ago, 11 years ago. So now that page is worth like way more, but it's just ironic that like, I was like, it'll be fine. Just wait it out. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Cryptocurrency, then when, right. wait it out. And then the Iron Fist thing, she's like, why do they call him Iron Fist? But he's got a fire on his hand and all this yes, other stuff. Yeah. Like, why does it? Yeah. yeah I get it. Yeah, no, and we're not she, making and, fun of women that don't like comics. We're just specifically no, talking just about my, John's it, wife that didn't care at the time. It's yeah. one of those weird, it's one of those things where like my wife very much likes that I'm very good at my job or I'm good at this or I, I, I do this and people like what I do, but she has no idea any of this stuff. Like I do a lot of Chris Pacello pages. I work with him a lot and it's funny I'll, when I get the pages in, in FedEx, Chris is amazing. He's overly unique. Nobody can pencil like him, but you really have to be used to what you're looking at because it's it's very unique and so i'll show her the pencil page like what do you think this is and she's like i don't know you guys are crazy and she'll just walk out of the room and so i like, get you know, off and i'll show her when it's done i was like see this is this and she's like oh okay <laughs> she can't doesn't have time for that john she's got packages to ship and money to make yeah i know and with our little uh, hurricane runner around the house we gotta run, run after her and what John's not telling you is that $1,000 piece that he bought 12 years ago has three thumbtacks in it behind his head right now. No, that's just a Stranko <laughs> poster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you guys are working with Zoop now. You got, you got the book itself <clears throat> yeah, and everything that goes along with, with Slow City Blues. Uh, when you got the final proofs ready to go, how excited were you now that like it's come to fruition since this is something that that you guys have been putting together and especially sam you know since 2013 of getting all everything ready for this big uh, essential um creator owned project yeah it it's it's why it feels like uh like a debut i weirdly enough 2020 we all picked up weird things, right? People did uh, crocheting, people did sourdough. I got, you know, like I weirdly got into uh, the Korean band BTS. And so, yeah, no, I know. But you know what? It's stressful. And sometimes you just gotta think, you gotta find a, a, a carefree outlet. Uh, but it's like they are like Korean bands like debut, right? They're like, get on the world stage. That's what this feels like. And it's, it's like, oh, it's a wild time to like, make a debut and it's a it's it's really cool to like see it and have it and hold it and be like this is ours and we get to share it and it's it's it, the even like the paper stock is really nice and so like we're 
I'm just so I'm just so happy to share it. Like we went through, we would go through the comic book and be like, no, not this paper stock, not this one. We go through the shop and be like, oh, this one. And I'm like, ooh, oh, family trees got to go. Like, oh yeah. Like uh, what was that? That uh, that image book about the girl who's turning into a tree. I can't remember the name of it, but it's like they got really good paper stock. I was like, oh. And I think I grabbed one of the last, uh, the last, like, this is how long we've been doing it. Uh, I think like the last issue of Paper Girls, I was like 31. I was like, oh, this is, this is, the, this is the paper stock. <laughs> so, so it's, it's, it's a trip, man. It's, it's really cool to like finally hold it in your hands. Uh, you know, the other difference the other difference with me is that not many people have really seen any of this stuff. So I've just been true. chomping at the bit. You know, I've been very good about keeping under wraps and like, you know, really no one's seen these covers. No one's seen most of the pages. I've been slowly like tweeting out panels here and there. Like, oh, I was fairly happy how this panel came out or this or that. So, but yeah, it's definitely, you know, we've been keeping this under wraps for so long. It's very different now that the cover list is out there now we can show like the cool pages from the book and like all the all the double page spreads and everything else that was taking me forever to do and or like you know the handful of panels that i was spending forever on i was like all right dad, now, now like, someone can finally see this and see if this was worth me staying up every night you know doing this so <laughs> yeah, yeah. saying so it's it's out now because this time it'll be when this airs, it'll be June seventh, so you can go and pick it up and check it all out. See if we're lying about the paper stock, and see you know, see how cool the covers are, and you know, check out John's uh, very humble and understated art because he'll never brag about himself. So I have always have to like either bully him into bragging about himself or just do it for him. No, you're you're right about that because John will never talk about his own stuff, but he'll brag yeah. about everybody else and build everybody yep. else up. And we're like, you know, you're better than the guy you're talking about, right? Yeah, and John, yeah, I know you're real good, not. right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that, that's not – just need to keep moving along and doing your stuff. You know, it's always easier. It, it. It, it's never easier to be positive. It still seems to be easier to be negative. So as long as you can be – I like to be as helpful as possible. So I'm always good about trying to – you know, I see always people on Twitter that, you know, if they're looking for work or if they're in a bind and they're trying to sell artwork right away, I always try to really give them a push and – hopefully it's helpful. I don't know if it is or not, but I always try to make sure and, you know, really get that word out there if people need help with stuff. And that's just John's character, man. And we appreciate and you for it. Everybody loves Levisac. That's what I always <laughs> say. I, I tease him and I call him the mayor of town because he knows everybody and everyone loves him. And he's just like his whole, it's just shaking hands and kissing babies right. with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's another thing. We've always mispronounced John's name as Livesay, and it is, really is Levisay, but John never corrects anybody anyway. Uh, that's it's, it's that okay. nice. It's, it's I, I know it's it's not the easiest one, and I pretty much dealt with it every year going to school. And yeah, I only think I had one teacher get upset that I politely corrected him. I think it was like in fourth grade, and he got very irked that I dared to correct him on speaking. And I, I was like, okay. <laughs> Well, you got a pen name out of it, so that's all that matters. Yeah, no, I mean, I, the, and no one else has my last seal. name, so it is unique and it is helpful for people's memory. Well, gentlemen, you guys are working with Zoop, Z O O P. Uh, could they purchase the book, the books through Zoop's website, or is it going to be at comic book stores? Like, how are we going to be able to find the book? The best way to do it is through Zoop. So it's either wearezoop.com or zoop.gg, uh, or you can find it a little more convolutedly uh you can go to our socials uh both the twitter and the the instagram are at scb comics plural uh and then the link is in the bio and you can check out all the you know all the cool stuff we've done so far and then you can go and look at all the trailers and all the every all the articles and all you know and, and actually scroll through the books and uh it, again it's the, the name may be funny zoop uh but the, what they've set up is, you know, is absolutely amazing. Oh, and we'll have, and, and, oh, sorry. Um, no, we ahead. will have a new, like, there's a new trailer that will be, that will already be up now, the new uh, trailer for the book. It's amazing. I mean, I don't know if I've, a few people have seen it. 
before we had it up and you know we've already had everyone tell us it's probably one of the best comic trailers they've seen so we'll have a that soon and also we have a very attractive retailer tier yes. in zoo for comic shops so again i did not i did not want to leave them out because along with the They're fans the, lifeblood. the comic shops are the reason i have a career and i was able to keep going each year with my career with their you know generosity and ordering all the books i worked on and everyone else who's a pro i mean we we need those and i still go every wednesday to pick up the stuff so you know i they're they're definitely you should check that out but we definitely have some good stuff so we got great stuff up on the website and then also you know not again to give uh the brick and mortar stores love we have a really awesome variant just for them so yes. you can get it online and then you got to go to the stores and get it from them <clears throat> it might be one of the cooler colored covers we have i mean it's gonna yeah it'll stand out you walk in the store you could see it like all the way in the back it's it's very very cool and it was one of the least detailed covers i did but once we got the coloring on there it like i mean it pops it, it, it's very nice it might it ended up being probably one of my favorite ones so that'd be the nice retailer exclusive. Awesome. Guys, where can we find you on social media if we want to connect with you guys personally? And we know that the hashtag is Slow City Blues. And again, the Instagram and Twitter are SCB, uh, I'm sorry, SCB Comics. So, you know, it's going to be easy to find you guys that way. Mine, my Twitter is um, at one John Levesse. And I am only through, I am an enigma, no social media. No social media. <laughs> so just uh, well, you can reach out Instagram. to them on the Slow City ones. Yeah. Okay. So the Instagram is where we get to see the art. The Twitter is where we get to argue with you guys about politics because that's just the way society <laughs> works right now. So you can scream into the wall, scream into the void together. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe 12 people will listen to you and you'll get lucky enough to create a viral hashtag, you know. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so before I let you guys go real quick, uh, animation plans for the future, last action hero style uh, movie telling in the future. Uh, what do you see five more issues from now? Uh, I have to say uh, we, five more issues. We have the next, I have the next 15 written. So if everyone loves it and everyone's excited about the book and everyone picks it up, pick it up. Uh, we get to keep telling this story and you, you read it and I think you can attest to it's pretty bonkers. It gets the world gets wider, the world gets deeper, the world gets even crazier. So it you just more like it's like the, it's like almost like the Fast and Furious franchise is just more. What can we do? More, crazier, crazier. Jump a building, go to space, but then the slow city equivalent of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you ever need a voice for a six foot skunk, I'll make myself. There available. it is. <laughs> well, well, we I got we got so many characters, man. So if we ended up doing the an animated series, we know who to call. There you go, man. And I and I, and I know guys who to talk to you as well. But John Levisay, Sean Hain, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Slow thank City you. Blues is out June seventh. You guys can buy all five loose leaf issues. Eventually, a graphic novel. God knows nope. what else is going to come with this. What's that, John? All at the same yeah. time. Oh, all, all at the, the same, same time. time. The hardcover is yep. available. Same time. Yeah. You know, so I have something to put on my shelf with the hardcovers and then I know everyone else is going to have, you know, their their pick of the litter and go from there. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure and it's always great to reconnect. Thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for letting us hang out with you. For sure. Yeah.